This is Melee's reverse temple jump. It's really f***ing hard. Most characters can't make the jump. Their recovery just doesn't cut it. Even characters who have amazing recoveries in competitive play, like Samus or Pikachu, still can't make the jump. Their recoveries are good because they cover enormous horizontal distances, but they can't gain enough height to reach that top ledge. These five characters can make the jump, but only in special cases. Pichu can make it, but he needs an insanely precise starting location and pixel-perfect controller coordinates to do an up B where both zips go straight up. For the Lynx and Peach, they can- oh, I can wait. They can reach with a bomb, but Peach has to get lucky for the 1 in 384 chance at a bob bomb every time she down bees, and the Lynx need to be at really high percent for the bomb knockback to cover enough distance. Or they need task level SDI to do it at low percent. For Luigi, he needs to get lucky with the 1 in 8 chance of side B to misfire, then also needs to do a near task mash to gain sufficient height with down B before finally up being to turn around and grab the ledge. Fun fact, if you're mashing at the speed required to get the Mario Party Domination world record in 2019, yeah! you're pressing A 20 times a second, which is just barely fast enough to actually make the double jump with Luigi. Puff can make the jump, but that shouldn't be too surprising. If she side B's right after double jumping, her momentum is conserved during pound startup and she gains even more height. So she can do this sequence five times using the last one to turn around to complete the jump. Kirby can make it too. He just needs to bear after every double jump since he gets worse drift in his jump animation. And and then, there's Mewtwo. But before I can explain exactly how Mewtwo's temple jump works, first we need to talk about double jump characters. Thank you. See, most characters in Melee just have a simple parabolic midair jump. When they input the jump, they get an instant burst of upwards velocity on the next frame, and gravity acts on them immediately, accelerating them back down towards Earth. But for Peach, Yoshi, Mewtwo, and Ness, the devs wanted to give their jumps a bit more personality. When these characters press the jump button, they don't get instant upwards velocity. Instead, their jumps follow a set vertical trajectory, which is unique to them. Let's take a look at Yoshi's as an example. Right after double jumping, Yoshi's velocity is basically zero. Then he accelerates downward for about 10 frames, and then finally he accelerates upward and gains massive height by the end of his full 70 frame double jump. Most importantly, these characters aren't affected by gravity until the double jump animation ends or is canceled somehow. If you do cancel Cancel the double jump early with an aerial or special move, you'll exit the double jump with whatever velocity you had the frame before canceling, and gravity will take over immediately. This is called a double jump cancel, or DJC for short. There are many different applications of this mechanic, and they all depend on the exact trajectory of each double jump and when it's canceled. We'll start with Yoshi, because that's my go. We saw that Yoshi's double jump has a trajectory which moves down for several frames before eventually moving upwards. If Yoshi cancels his double jump during that first window, he'll exit his double jump with downward velocity and can fast fall immediately. This is essential bread and butter movement for Yoshi's neutral and punish game. I think at first, uh, the beginners should learn the uh, double jump pattern near on the upper air for improving your punish game. <laughs> This particular application of DJC is not unlike hit falling in Rivals of Aether in its function. Check out this recent video by Wisely to learn more about that mechanic. On top of that, Yoshi is the only character that can turn around with his double jump other than Jigglypuff, so he can perform low DJC aerials quickly in either direction out of his grounded movement and put on massive amounts of pressure. These low DJCs aren't quite as useful for Peach, since her low float aerials achieve the same result with less lag and without risking her double jump. However, she's still got some stuff. Aerials in this game have what are called auto cancel frames, which basically means that if you land during those frames, you don't have any aerial landing lag. For instance, Peach can auto cancel her forward air during frames 1 through 15 before the hitbox comes out on frame 16. And that's exactly what Ryobeat is leveraging here. They double jump land to board the platform, run off the right side, then DJC with forward air to switch their momentum to the left, land during the auto cancel window, and dash attack to punish Falco's down air. Here's another example. 
Triff jumps forward, DJ C fares back, lands during the auto cancel frames, and power shields Zamu's approach to get a punish. Uh, Triff, yeah, with the with the wave dash back, power shield grab. <laughs> Actually, soon said this DJ C auto cancel fare is referred to by some as a slap dash, which is kind of a stupid name because there's no dashing involved. But hey, I don't make the rules. It's a stupid fucking name, but who gives a shit? S can also perform low DJC aerials, but since his double jump trajectory starts with slight upwards velocity rather than downward, he needs to cancel the double jump ASAP, then wait a few frames before fast falling to make sure that upwards velocity is gone. He'll use this for low up airs in his combo game and low DJC bears to whiff punish approaches. In addition, one of Ness's standard approaches is when he DJC down airs out of his full hop. We've already seen from Peach and Yoshi that a key advantage of the quick DJC is the character's ability to change horizontal momentum mid-air before immediately falling back down to earth. This gives Ness a lot of trajectory possibilities for that classic DJC dare. And Mewtwo gets a little bit of everything. Like Ness, his double jump moves slowly upward at the start, so he too has to delay his fast falls for a low DJC aerial. And as before, using DJC to change momentum while airborne gives Mewtwo access to lots of different drift mix-ups. But Mewtwo is also very, very special. Unlike Yoshi, Peach, or Ness, Mewtwo reaches incredibly high speed just before the peak of his double jump. If you cancel the double jump during that high speed ascent, then Mewtwo will gain way more height than from his uninterrupted double jump trajectory, the ending of which decelerates Mewtwo way faster than gravity can. This extended double jump means that Mewtwo has one of the best recoveries in the entire game, and he can pretty much make it back to stage from anywhere off screen if he still has his double jump. Mewtwo players tend to perform this DJC with back air because it's Mewtwo's shortest aerial at 31 frames, so it leaves him actionable earlier than anything else. In some cases, Mewtwo can even use this technique offensively to land some pretty crazy aerials. It's funny how different game design decisions can compound upon each other to yield such an unexpected result. First, you decide to give some characters quirky double jumps. Next, you decide on what to do if they perform an attack before the quirky double jump ends. And then all of a sudden you've given Mewtwo the best recovery in the game. And we haven't even gotten to Shadow Ball and all the ridiculous nonsense that allows for. At the end of the day, Mewtwo players are gonna take advantage of whatever bullshit they can to squeeze a bit more life out of their stocks and their punishes. And if not that, at least it makes for a cute party trick. Thanks for watching. If you like the visual style of this video, be sure to check out my print store at frasermakesart.com. Link is also in the description. Big thank you to Fizzy, Jason Tong, Jazzy, Math Geek, Stephanator, and Xander J.